Hey everybody, this is Epic Oreo. Uh, I'm the lead developer for Resourceful Bees. Uh, today we're going to discuss the apiary multi-block structure, uh, how it works and how to build it, and go over a couple other aspects of the structure itself. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, you can see here that I have a couple different designs that I've already laid out and made. Um, I'm not the greatest builder in the world, so, you know, if they kind of look ugly, <laughs> that's just me. Um, that's not the structure itself. Uh, that being said, though, uh, to start with, the apiary structure must be a 7 by 6 by 7 hollow cube. Uh, you can actually see that here. Um, the... Blocks utilized for the structure must be in the valid apiary tag, uh, which does have data pack support. So you're able to add other blocks that you want to it and make it so that it's customizable. Uh, for example, we have here Silent Gems, Pearl Bricks, which I added to it. Um, we have Macaw's Windows that I've added to it. Uh, macaws doors, macaws roofs. Um, I added those for the example that I'm showing you today. Uh, the structure itself must also include an apiary block. As you can see here, we've got the tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four apiary. Uh, it also must include an apiary storage block. Uh, there's only one version of it. I just included several for fun. Um, the Inside of the structure and anything outside of the structure does not count towards its validation. Uh, so you're able to put stuff inside of it to decorate it, whether that be the necessary flowers for the bees to pollinate to actually produce honeycombs, or if you want to add lights inside so that you don't have to worry about mobs spawning in there, uh, you can do anything like that, and it's not going to affect how the structure itself works. The uh, structure checks itself and validates itself on the direction in which the block is facing. You can kind of see that here, um, that these blocks are facing in this direction. And as such, when they're checking to validate the structure, they're going to be checking all of the blocks in the ranges in front of it. Um, the Apiary does come with a visualize button, which allows you to preview the structure. Uh, when you're previewing the structure, uh, any block that you see that is red is a block that has not been included in the valid apiary tag, marking it as an invalid location. Uh, anything where you see that it has the black glass looking blocks, uh, that's where you need to place blocks in order to be able to complete the structure. Uh, if you have valid blocks that are in place, such as these wool blocks, uh, you're not going to see anything rendered on them. So if I were to have a structure that was completely built and I was to click on the preview button, I wouldn't actually see anything. Uh, the preview button also respects the offset. Now, offsets are used to determine the apiary position on the face of the structure based on the direction in which it is facing. So for example, my limits for the offsets are a minus one on the vertical axis, a positive two on the vertical axis, and a positive or negative two in the horizontal uh, axis. Um, with that said, that would mean that it would put the position right here. And then you could go two blocks over to the left, you could go two blocks over to the right, you can go two up, or you can go down one. Putting it anywhere in this region where this apiary can be stored. Uh, that's useful for changing like where you want it to be positioned, um, if you want it to be up high, if you want it to be down low, if you want to make it so it's easier to access, you can do different things of that nature with it. Um, the structure also comes with this creative mode build button. Uh, this is really just used for rapid fire testing by pack developers or uh, players to kind of get a better idea um, 
of either what the structure should look like in its completed state, or if you want to test some things out and see if the bee is generating too much or not enough or whatever you want to do, um, or to verify if you just want to like place a couple blocks in real quick for some other purpose, you can do so. You just click on this button and it'll automatically build the structure. I can actually show that here. Uh, if I was to say, put this one here, you could see how it's previewing. It's showing that those two are invalid blocks. It's showing that I have no other blocks placed that I need to have placed. And if I wanted to, I could click on this build button and it'll automatically build a valid structure. It's automatically gonna supply the apiary storage block and it's gonna place every block where it needs to be. And then it's gonna run through its validation process. And then you would be able to do whatever you need to do. Uh, you can import bees into it or you can export them out of it, do whatever you need to do for your testing purposes. Um, with that said, the apiary is meant for a late game or end game usage. Uh, it was designed so that it had the equivalency of say mystical agriculture combined with agricraft so that you had like 10, 10, 10 seeds that output just like massive quantities of resources. That's kind of how this apiary was designed to be. Um, you have a few different config options available at your disposal. That's kind of a double thing there, <laughs> double speak. Um, the config options that are available for the apiary, while they do appear out of order in the um, config file, which I'm not sure why Forge does that, but apparently it just put them out of order. Um, you have options for the tier one, the tier two, the tier three, and the tier four apiary. You can choose what its output quantity is, and you can choose whether it outputs honeycombs or it outputs honeycomb blocks. Uh, you can set the value or quantity to anything one or greater. So you can make it so that it outputs 256 honeycomb blocks if you really wanted to and it would output 256 honeycomb blocks. Um, with that said, the storage block is designed to respect stack limits of 64 for each individual slot. The storage also comes with nine slots initially, but it can be upgraded with the use of the iron, gold, diamond, or emerald upgrades. The iron upgrade will provide you with a full chest's worth of inventory space. The gold will provide you a double chest's worth of inventory space. The diamond will provide you with 81 slots or a double plus a single chest worth of space. And finally, the emerald block will provide you with four chests or two double chests worth of space, 108 total slots. Um, The honeycombs respect it. So if you had, say, 256 as your output quantity, it would put 64, 64, 64, 64, and it would fill your slots up fairly quickly. So obviously upgrades are very well worth having to increase storage. You can only have one apiary storage block per apiary. However, you can utilize the same structure space for multiple apiaries. So as you can see here, I have two apiaries in the same structure, and each apiary is linked to a separate uh, uh, storage block. So if I was to click on this one, this one is apparently linked to this storage block, and this one is apparently linked to this storage block. It's just gonna, when it's running through the list of all the blocks that it needs to validate, the very first storage block it runs into, that's the one it's going to link itself to. So if you place multiple ones, there's no way to guarantee that this one is linked to this one specifically. It's just whichever one it runs into first. Um, if you were to say break a block because the structure revalidates itself every 15 seconds starting at a random interval so that they're not all running simultaneously and bogging down servers, if after 15 seconds you were to check it again, you would actually see that it invalidated itself 
Uh, obviously, that prevents people from being able to abuse the structure system, uh, but it also allows for quick uh, changes if you need to make a really quick change. Uh, in addition, um, it also makes performance on servers or uh, sing or even in single player worlds, it makes it a little bit better for you. Uh, the apiary itself can only hold up to a maximum of nine unique bees each. So that's in reference to the block itself, not the structure. Obviously, you can see in this particular structure, there are several emerald bees. If I was to go and open it up, you would see that there is only one emerald bee in there, despite the fact that there are several in the structure. However, over here, you could see that there is a variety of bees that are going in and out, the redstone, wither, gold, diamond, etc. Uh, if you were to place a, if you were to import a bee into your structure, uh, you need to have the bee captured in a bee jar, place it in here, and then you click import. When you do that, it's going to import your bee into the structure and it's automatically going to lock the bee. It does that on purpose so that if you want to supply flowers because you didn't put them in there yet, you can do so. Uh, if you're not ready to produce its resources yet, but you want the bee in the structure, you can also do that as well. Um, it's also required that the bee be locked in order for you to be able to export it. So if, say, I wanted to export this diamond bee, I have it selected, I have it locked, I can click export, and it's going to fill the bee jar up with that particular bee. And then I can go take that bee and do whatever I want, put it in my inventory, whatever. Um, the apiary itself also reduces the maximum time that a bee spends in, a, in the hive. Uh, so the default values that you set in your JSON, if you were to, say, have a bee that spent 600 ticks, which is the minimum value it can possibly spend in, an a, in a hive, when you have a Tier 4 apiary, it's going to have the maximum reduction of 50% meaning that that bee is actually only going to spend 300 ticks in the hive. So not only can you make it so that it generates more honeycombs, but it also generates those honeycombs faster. Uh, the other nice thing is you don't have to worry about bees getting angry because you're harvesting their honeycombs because that's how the structure is designed. Uh, the tier one apiary starts at a 35% reduction in time and it goes up from there at five percent increments uh the beehives themselves start at a 15 percent and go up by five percent so they would be uh 15 to 30 percent um the apiary when broken if you have bees inside of the block they will stay inside of the block so it's convenient for transporting them around if you need to. Uh, in addition, the apiary storage, when you break this block, it will retain its upgrade in addition to its storage. Uh, if after the very first nine slots, you have any other honeycombs or blocks inside of the storage, you cannot remove the upgrades. Uh, at a later time, I may make some changes to that. I actually plan to make some changes to that. So it's a little bit easier to upgrade because if you say had a iron storage in there and it was filled, you couldn't just put a gold one in and increase the storage space uh, without first taking the honeycombs out. Uh, so I do plan on making a change to that. Uh, the slots are also ex or output only, meaning you cannot put items into it. It cannot be used as a chest. Uh, it can only be utilized for the purpose of the apiary, and its sole, its sole purpose is for having a place to put the honeycombs so that you don't have to worry about angering the bees when you're collecting your honeycombs. The storage block does not have to be on the bottom. Uh, you could see in several instances I have it on the bottom. However, in this instance, I have it on the side. Uh, you could place it on the top, you could put it on the bottom, you could put it in the wall, you could put it anywhere you want as long as it is part of the 7x6x7 x x hollow cube. Uh, 
um, that makes it convenient for automation purposes or uh, say like refined storage purposes. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Uh, you do still have to have flowers inside of the structure for the bees to generate. Um, it works very similarly to a vanilla beehive or even our modded beehive, except in the sense that it generates more resources faster um, and it looks beautiful uh, based on how you design it. So you could design it to be just all dirt and look ugly, or you can make it look like this and make it look gorgeous. Um, but you do have to put the flowers in it for the bee that you want to be able to have done. At a later time, we will have an optional breeder block. That block will allow for breeding inside of the apiary. So you would be able to put the bee jars inside of it, and then you would be able to breed as long as you supplied it with flowers and whatever else it needed. Um, and then that would allow you to breed the bees to whatever bee you're looking for. Uh, other than that, I believe we've covered everything we need to cover. So I appreciate your time today. Uh, if you do have any other questions or concerns, or if there's anything else that I've missed, uh, definitely reach us at, reach out to us on GitHub or reach out to us on Discord. Uh, GitHub is better for reporting bugs, and Discord is better for uh, asking questions and getting a little bit more immediate assistance if you have any questions. Um, the only other thing I'm going to leave you with here is a look at what the default values for the valid apiary tag are. Um, you can see that here. Uh, it's pretty much just a lot of like decoration kind of blocks or building blocks. And then you can see here that I used a data pack to add additional blocks to it, which were actually specifically for the purposes of this video. Uh, so I think we've covered everything about the, val about the apiary multi-block structure. Uh, again, please let us know if you have any questions or concerns. With that said, I certainly hope you guys have a wonderful day. And thanks again.